Hello everyone, this is Agriya Patios and today in this video we are going to talk about the chapter 1 of organic farming. In this video we will be discussing about the definition, the difference between the conventional and the organic farming process, what are the principles of this organic farming, what are the advantages, then the nutrient management being followed, how are the weed management practices happening, disease management happening in organic farming. Also we will be talking in detail about the IPM word that is insect pest management. Uh, after that, we will be taking up few of the limitations and some implications of organic farming. So, let's begin. First of all, to quote with the definition take, given by FAO, which is Food and Agriculture Organization in 2002, what is organic farming? They defines as a holistic production management system. This is a production management system, which is holistic, that is completely incorporating different means, which is promoting and enhancing the health of ecosystem, including the biodiversity in it, the biological cycles associated with it, and the soil biological activity to be precise. So, if we are saying that a system which is having very less interventions coming from outside, the system is balanced in terms of ecology, in terms of biodiversity, that kind of a system which is ecologically based on different pest control methods, different biological control methods derived largely from animals and plant, even waste included in that, nitrogen, uh, nitrogen fixing crops, etc. That whole means, that holistic approach of having a system in place that is called as organic farming. So, I hope it is clear, terminology is clear with us. Now, moving on to the concept of nutrient management and why the process is important, why the process is necessary. First of all, as we all know that the fertilizer application in the fields is increasing to X extent. That increase of fertilizer and the chemical usage is making the crop which is produced from that field very, very unhealthy for the consumption of human population. Also, the soil quality, the nutrients, the environment is also slowly and gradually getting damaged with that. So, what is this organic farming giving us? Firstly, it is a sustainable means and an eco-friendly technology which is not harming the environment. Second, it is improving the quality, the shelf and the nutritive value of the farm produce. If a field is having a production just with organic means, like organic manures are being used in the field, weed control methods not involving any chemicals from outside, insect management, disease management is happening without any chemicals. So, that is going to ultimately benefit the crop which is produced from that field and this is going to improve the quality of that produce. So, in that terms also, in terms of nutritive value also, the farm produce will enhance. Third, it is encouraging a sustainable livelihood for producers as well as safeguarding the consumer's health also. So, it is a two-way benefit which is being provided by organic farming. Next, it is improving the health of soil also because soil is not getting disturbed with the chemical uses. So, it is improving the physical, the chemical and the biological health of soil as well. Next, it is promoting the healthy use of natural resources and minimizing any form of pollution. If a field is not having any insect or uh, inse insecticide or herbicide or some chemical onto the field, then all the different uh, natural resources, all the different natural uh, qualities of the field are going to be retained for a longer period of time and they're not going to be lost in the process. So that is also one of the very important part why organic farming is important and necessary. Last, not the least, it enhances and it sustains the biodiversity, biological diversity within the system. If, for example, if you are using a chemical in the field, then not necessarily it is just harming the insect or the pest for which that chemical is given. But apart from that, the good insects, the very favorable insects or those insects which are good for the field, it is killing that also. So, in this way, the biological diversity within the system is getting disrupted, which needs to be prevented and organic farming is one of the methods which is helping us contribute to the same process. Now, let's talk 
about the difference between when we say conventional farming and when we talk about the organic farming. Conventional is the basic one, which is the based on economical orientation. But organic farming, this is based on ecological orientation or totally basing on the ecology. Talking about the supplementing of nutrients, conventional farming does it through the chemical fertilizers also. But in organic farming, the nutrient cycle within the farms is predominantly with the material which are produced from the farm. So it is a process which is organic in nature in that way. Weed control in conventional can be through herbicide, pest control is through pesticide, all those means are followed. Livestock is rarely combined to a conventional farming, low input-output ratio because of the pollution associated with along the places and soil fertility is also not that good in the area and erosion and different soil loss events are encountered. But if we talk about organic farming, then weed control is through the crop rotation method and cultural practices which are followed. Livestock is also incorporated into the system. The ratio of output input is also very decent and the maximum conservation of soil, water and different wildlife is associated with the concept of organic farming. Talking about the advantages of this method, first of all, it is good for the environment health. It is good for soil health. It is reducing the risk of any health hazard for a human or any animal. It is preserving the resources around. It is also helping to reduce the crop failure issues. So all the way if we talk about the advantages are associated with the ecosystem to talk in a larger extent. Now talking about the benefits of this farming method. What are the good benefits of it? First of all, the long-term fertility of soil is improved. Second, environment health is improved, reduction in this pollution level is all obviously obtained. It reduces the health hazards by reducing the residues in the product. It helps to keep the agriculture production at a very good level with making it sustainable. It reduces the cost of production and also it improves the soil health. Along with that, it ensures the optimum utilization happens of the natural resources around for short as well as for the longer terms which can be preserved for the future generations which are coming. It also not only saves energy for both, but also reduces the risk of any crop failure as also. So these are all the different benefits which this organic farming is giving. Not talking about the objectives of this organic farming, as already discussed in to a wider extent, these are all seven major points. One, to produce a food with high nutritional quality is one of the major obje objectives. Second, working with the natural system so that the main resources, the sustainability of the resources is maintained. Soil fertility is improved and increased. Renewable resources are enhanced and they are given a good amount of boost. Then pollution is avoided. Ecological impact is lessened. Then satisfaction to the produce and the producer is also a very important objective of the organic farming method. Now, there are four major principles associated with this farming method. One is the principle of health, second is the principle of ecology, third is the principle of fairness, and fourth is the principle of care. These four principles should be known to all. First of all, if we say the principle of health, it just means that organic agriculture should sustain and should enhance all the soil, plant, animal, human, any, everybody's health. So first is the concept of health. Second is the concept of ecology, which, which, is, which states that the production should be based on the ecological processes and the recycling of all of them. So recycling can only happen when we are following the organic needs. Third is the principle of fairness, which means that the characteristic of equity, respect, justice, stewardship, and sharing the world with others. With others means ecologically, flora and the flora, uh, fauna which is associated with the place. Fourth is the care. This organic agriculture should be managed in a way, with a responsible way to protect the health, to protect the future generations and to protect the environment altogether. So all these four principles are the, the pillars or are the base for developing an organic farming ecosystem. Now, 
If we talk about India, then Sikkim is a 100% organic state. This state was declared in 2003 because the use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides have been discouraged. On-farm inputs include worming composting. They are enriching the rural compost. They are using integrated nutrient management practices. They are using biofertilizers, green manure, azola, liming of the acidic soils and micronutrients. If you want some of the contents to be discussed in detail, please do mention it in the comment box. I can make a separate content on this video also. Organic cultivation, if we talk about then out of all the seven sister states, Sikkim is accounting to most of the area which is organically being cultivated. So this is one of the important approach which is being followed. What are the basic steps that are followed in an organic farming approach? There are five major principles. First is conversion of the land happens from the conventional management to an organic management. Second, entire surrounding system is converted to ensure the biodiversity and the sustainability is maintained or uh, ensured. Third, that crop production with using the alternative sources of nutrients like crop rotation, residue management, organic manures and biological inputs is followed. Then management of weed and pests is also important part. Then last, not the least, is the maintenance of the livestock which is associated with that area should also be incorporated and should be an integral part of this ecosystem. What are the components? As we already talked about components they followed. This is this includes vermicomposting, manures, biofertilizer, animal husbandry, biological management, crop rotation, green manures. All of them are included in this. Why are we talking about the livestock or the animal husbandry? Is because the manure or the dung which is excreted by these animals is a very important component in this organic farming process. That's why livelihood or livestock management is included in this process. Now, organic manure, if we say, then we have farmyard green manure, we have compost, we have poultry, we have sheep and goat droppings, we have concentrated organic manure, which are very, very helpful for developing our organic farming and to taking it ahead. If we say biofertilizers, then there are bacterial and fungal biofertilizers. For example, rhizobium is there, azotobacter is there, azospirillum is there. Then we have the plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. Then we have PSBs, we have uh, mycorrhizal fungi, then we have blue green algae, and then azola. These are all examples of biofertilizers. They are also important ones. Now, if we have, if you need to talk about the pest infestation, then we have the combined method which is called as the insect pest management. What is that method? That includes chemical, physical, cultural and biological method. Talking about the preventive method if we say then first of all how can you prevent a, a growth a different uh, unusual growth? First is weed free crop seed. First of all if seed is good then there will be no infestation. Weed free manure. Manure should be weed free. There should, there should not be any extensive weed available in the sample. There should be clean harvesting, plowing equipment, everything should be clean. So this is a prevention method. In this way, you can control the spread or the initial start of the infestation. Second, we have the cultural method. In cultural method, for weed control, we can crop rotate. For weed control, we, even we can have the cover crops or the canopies. Also, we can grow the smoother crops like sorghum, like cow pig, like corn varieties, cover crops for the small farm areas. They are There are many benefits which are associated with these cover crops. We can use drip irrigation as a practice. So, these are all cultural methods. These are all cultural techniques. Smoother crops, it helps to reduce the dependence on the chemical weed control methods. Then we, we, are, we are using the cover crops then uh, cover crop, I have made a separate video on this. You can search on my channel. Then we have crop rotation. That is also a very important method. Then optimum plant density and sowing in the line format. That is also important. Drip irrigation already talked about method. Then we have mechanical method. This involves tillage. It involve, involves stale seed bed, bedding, hand weeding, hoeing, mowing, mulching, burning, soil solarization, allelopathy. Allelopathy's example can be marigold, congress grass. These are all examples and methods which are very, very important and very effective methods which are used as insect pest management methods in organic farming sector. Soil solarization, I don't think you might have uh, known this term or if known, please do mention it in the comment box below. Ideally, soil solarization is non-chemical and non-hazardous means where we control the weeds and the soil borne path pathogens. In this, there is a simple technique which captures the radiant heat energy from the sun. The energy is captured by causing the physical, chemical and biological changes in the soil. This is how the method is followed. Then we come to the physical methods. Physical is like you are 
investing your energy into that. So in this, we have to install the pheromone traps, light traps, mechanical control traps. Then we have nylon nets also. So these kind of methods or these kind of control methods are used in the field so that the infestation is not coming or attacking the field. Then we have the cultural methods. What are the cultural methods included? Like sanitation, crop rotation, trap cropping. Trap cropping is like you are trapping the uh, the insect. How you are trapping with cabbage, mustard, diamond, back moth can be an example associating with it, trap cropping. Then water management, adjusting the time of sowing, adjusting the means of sowing, insect control, adequate soil fertility, adequate drainage. All of these methods are un coming under the cultural methods of weed control. Now, what are the limitations of this farming in India particularly? In India, first limitation is that the landholdings are small. So the a chunk of the farmers who can practice this is very less. Poor infrastructural facilities are available. There is very of very la a very prominent lack of uh, technological knowledge in the country. Uh, conversion of the organic farms and the ratio and the knowledge regarding that is also very vague. Neighboring farmers, well cooperation requirement is necessary but which is not uh, readily available. There is higher population in India. Organic materials like the dung and the other crop waste are used for the fuel purpose. So they cannot be used in the organic farming practice. They are not being used particularly. Organic materials are bulky in nature. So they are difficult to store and they are having high price. Garbage contains heavy metal, plastic bags, stones, needles. This is also one of the important problem. Biocontrol agents are available only for the selected insect pests. So if the field is infested with some other pest, then you're not able to control that. And complicated certification processes and also the associated fees with is also very very high so these are the few few shortcomings or limitations you can say to the organic farming in india which if controlled or if taken care of can result in a very good amount of population turning it turning their fields into organic farmers and organic farming and supporting their lives with that so overall if we say it is a sustainable means it is a good means to develop and to sustain your ecological diversity along with that I hope you like the content. If you like the content, please do subscribe to my channel. If you have any query regarding any of the points that I shared, please do mention it in the comment box below. Please do subscribe to my videos, like, share and subscribe with your friends. Thank you for watching.